Hubble just captured something humanity has never seen before. Hubble has just captured the most horrible object that humanity has never seen before. The most bizarre object to exist in our universe. So what is it that is so bizarre? We are inviting you to join us as we reveal the horrible object ever seen in the known universe. A huge telescope in space called the Hubble Space Telescope, on April 24, 1990, the Space Shuttle Discovery was put into orbit, about 340 miles, 550 kilometers above Earth, Hubble orbits. It weighs as much as two mature elephants and is the length of a large school bus. Hubble travels at a speed of roughly 5 miles per second, or about 10 minutes to travel from the east coast to the west coast of the United States. Hubble runs on solar energy. Planets, stars, and galaxies are just a few of the sky objects that Hubble captures in clear images. Hubble has made almost a million observations. These companies in-depth images of billions of light-years distant galaxies, comet fragments, colliding with Jupiter's atmosphere, and the formation and demise of stars. The existence of a white dwarf that somehow survived its thermonuclear explosion has caused astronomers to wonder how and why these stars produce supernovae. A sun-like star's development ends with a white dwarf. When a star like this develops to the size of a red giant and eventually runs out of fuel for nuclear fusion reactions, it ejects its outer layers and creates a planetary nebula, or a shell of diffuse gas. The white dwarf, the star's inactive core, is left behind when the nebula expands and fades. Although white dwarfs are only slightly larger than Earth, they have a mass comparable to that of stars. They are, therefore, massive objects with gravitational fields potent enough to draw matter from any nearby companion stars. When enough material has accumulated on the white dwarf from this flow, it bursts in a thermonuclear detonation, known as a Type 1a supernova which often obliterates the star. The Hubble Space Telescope was on the scene right away when astronomers witnessed the supernova explosion known as 2012Z in the face on spiral galaxy NGC 1309, which is about 120 million light years away from Earth in the constellation Eridanus. Since Hubble had repeatedly photographed NGC 1309 in the years before the supernova, Astronomers could pinpoint the progenitor star system, discovering that it had a white dwarf stealing material from an old, helium-rich star that may have been a red giant. With this data, researchers photographed a Type 1a supernova's progenitor for the first time. But something didn't seem right with the Hubble data. In addition to demonstrating that the progenitor had survived the explosion, the photos also revealed that the white dwarf was now considerably brighter than before. For many years, scientists believed that the white dwarf stars could not grow any larger than the Chandrasekhar limit, which is equivalent to 1.4 times the sun's mass. This theory has partially waned in popularity in recent years due to the discovery of other supernovae that are less massive than this one, and new theoretical ideas that indicate alternate causes for supernovae to explode. Astronomers wondered if stars had ever been on the verge of the Chandrasekhar limit before exploding. The study's authors now believe that SN 2012Z experienced this growth to the absolute limit. According to astrophysicist Curtis McCulley of the Las Cumbres Observatory in California, nobody anticipated seeing a surviving star that was brighter. It was a true riddle, that one. Astronomers have discovered a phenomenon known as Type 1AX supernovas, which they believed to be failed Type 1A supernovas that leave behind residual zombie stars. One of the most noteworthy of these supernovas was SN 2008HA, which occurred in the constellation of Pegasus, 69 million light years away in the galaxy UGC 12682. On the other hand, SN 2012Z is the first supernova where photos before and after the explosion have allowed astronomers to prove that the bursting star lived. After researching SN 2012Z, McCulley and his associates have a tentative option about what transpired. The researchers hypothesize that the thermonuclear explosion was insufficient to destroy the white dwarf, that a large portion of the debris instead landed back onto the star, inflating the white dwarf and turning it into what astronomers refer to as a bound remnant. According to the astronomers, the stars should eventually revert to its initial inactive states. Light from various sources, including the glowing bound remnant itself, the shock-heated companion star that took the brunt of the explosive blast and the radioactive decay of material that escaped into space during the explosion, may be making the remaining white dwarf shine brighter than before. 
Typically, the Cobalt-56 and Cobalt-57 isotopes in the material ejected into space are what generate the light of a Type 1a supernova. Isotopes are atoms with various numbers of neutrons, but the same number of protons and electrons. Due to the decay of the majority of the cobalt within a few years and the subsequent sharp fading of the supernova's light, these isotopes have half-lives of 77 and 271 days, respectively. If radioactive decay is the main light source, it must be an isotope with a substantially longer half-life, because SN2012Z has been fading much more slowly. Iron-55, which has a half-life of 2.7 years, is recommended by McCulley's team. It is still unclear why SN2012Z chose to undergo this failed supernova rather than self-destruct in a regular Type 1A. The consequences for Type 1A supernovas are significant, according to McCulley. At least, supernovas can expand to their maximum size before exploding. However, the explosions are occasionally faint. Now, we need to comprehend what causes a supernova to succeed as a Type 1A, and what causes it to fail and become a Type 1AX. Astronomers refer to Type 1A supernovas' standardizable shift in brightness over time as a light curve, making calculating their distance much simpler. They are now essential in research on cosmic expansion and dark energy. Astronomers will be able to estimate the expansion of the universe and the amount of dark energy with even higher accuracy because of a better knowledge of how they erupt. The Hubble telescope captures unusual white dwarf supernova cosmic remnants. A breathtaking new image from the Hubble Space Telescope shows the intense red light of the fragmented remains of a star explosion. The colorful cosmic gas ribbons are the byproduct of a Type 1a supernova. The explosion of a dying white dwarf star, one of the nearest galaxies to Earth, is the Large Magellanic Cloud (LMC), a satellite dwarf galaxy of the Milky Way, where the supernova remnant DEML249 is situated. According to a NASA statement, Hubble captured this new image of DEML249 while scanning the LMC in search of stellar companions of white dwarf stars that have already been destroyed. According to NASA experts, in a binary system consisting of two stars orbiting one another, a white dwarf can gravitationally draw so much matter from its companion that it achieves critical mass and erupts. A huge and relatively youthful white dwarf star is thought to have existed before DEM L249, a particularly peculiar supernova remnant, met its fate. The white dwarf star that produced DEM L249 is thought to have been extraordinarily massive when it erupted, since larger stars emit more gas. As a result, the claim goes, the star would have passed away early in its life cycle. What are the Hubble's most significant findings? Scientists have used Hubble images to determine the age and size of the cosmos. It is estimated that the universe is 14 billion years old. Hubble has aided in the understanding of the galaxy and planet formation. The furthest galaxies ever observed are depicted in a Hubble Ultra Deep Field image. Black holes, which absorb everything around them, including light, have been discovered by Hubble. The discovery of dark energy, a puzzling component that drives the cosmos to expand more quickly over time, was made possible in large part by the telescope. Additionally, it has provided information on gamma-ray bursts, which are strong energy explosions caused by the demise of huge stars. Hubble has also investigated the atmospheres of planets that revolve around stars comparable to the Sun. When thinking of space, our mind just gets a rush of questions and thoughts. And here on Space Lab, you can leave them in the comment section. Exploring the space in real time isn't much possible, but here at the Space Lab, we are on a mission to explore space, and the good news is that you can join us too. By just subscribing to the channel. And make sure you have notifications turned on. Why to miss a trip? Thanks for watching till the end.